you should be live. Let's oh, see. Cool. Hello, friends. I am so excited to be back with you guys. It has been three weeks of vacation. I can't believe how fast it flew. We had a lot of fun, but we are back and ready to do some paper circuits all summer long. So we decided it would be a lot easier if we just had one set thing of supplies all summer and we would just do a lot of like artsy, craftsy things that also had a lot of STEM in it so that we could learn about paper circuits and learn how to make circuits and also make really cool art and have a good time over summer and then hopefully school will start back up. So this week we are doing Star Wars. You guys can let me know in emails or we can put out some polls on things that you guys want to do. I know Naomi wants to do a Circuit City if she's there with us and I know um, Clara and Anna wanted to do some magical creatures like fairy stuff so we'll hopefully get some of that stuff in. But George and Henry really wanted to do Star Wars and my girls wanted to do some Star Wars. So we're doing Star Wars this week. We have R2-D2, who we're gonna do today. He's gonna make this cute little guy like this. Oh, I love him. And then just so you know what's in store, tomorrow we're gonna make the Millennium Falcon. We've got a Star Destroyer that we're gonna make. We have an X-Wing Starfighter, which is gonna be super cool. This is my favorite one. And then we have these cute little LED characters that is sort of a little bobblehead, and then you can choose if you wanna be on the dark side. I've got like, Vader and some stormtroopers, or you can choose if you want to be on the light side. Up to you! We've got Chewie and Leia and Yoda. So we have a lot of fun in store and we'll make some really cool things that you guys can either use to decorate or to play some games with. So we will start with our paper circuit. You will need this guy in just a second. I'll get to our shadows, but you'll need this little guy. You need a printout. I suggest printing on heavier cardstock paper. It's really going to make your projects easier to put together, more durable, and less likely to break. So that's going to be really, really helpful. You're going to also need some LEDs. So I, this is just like a little pack of LEDs. They're all specific colors. One thing to note in your projects, if you choose to use a red LED, you have to use all red LEDs. So like my battery can light four red LEDs. But if I put in one red LED and then I want like some white somewhere else, not gonna work. The red will eat up everything the battery has to offer and none of the other colors will light up with red. So just be thoughtful in your projects about that red and I'll mention it in some other projects that have more than one LED. You can also get rainbow LEDs. Mine are really teeny, they're called three millimeter LEDs. Yours might be a little bigger, five millimeters, that's the kind I usually use, but three or five doesn't really matter. You just want some options on colors because that makes it fun. You're gonna need a battery to power that LED and we'll talk about how you can do that later on in class. You need like a hole puncher. So just like any sort of single hole puncher or you could also use like a sharpened pencil to punch the holes. No big deal if you can't find your hole puncher. You need a pair of scissors so that we can cut out our templates. You need some copper tape. So the copper tape looks like this. It's sticky on one side. We'll talk about how we can do that. That's our conductive tape. So it conducts electricity. It lets those electrons flow. And then you need a non-conductive tape, which doesn't let electrons flow. So that's like a scotch tape, a masking tape, a duct tape, any of those sort of plasticky tapes, electrical tape works great, um, that we also need. And then of course you need decorating supplies not necessarily limited to markers they could be whatever you want you could glue sequin buttons onto your r2d2 if you wanted to because i think that would be amazing um and that's what we need hopefully you guys will also use a camera and take pictures and send them to us because i want to see people's projects all right if you're new also you're on you can be on youtube or in zoom and then after i go through how to make these you can make it along with us ask us questions in the comments of either youtube or in Zoom, and Evan will read them out to me and we'll make sure your questions are addressed, but then we'll also go over into Zoom for troubleshooting or to share our projects. Without further ado, who do we have with us today? All right, I'm so... guessing a small little group. It is a small group. I'm I feel like maybe everybody's recovering from the 4th of July. Mm, and it's yes. been like three weeks. It's I been three weeks, it. I know. I can't believe it. It was fun. First up. First up. All the way from California. <gasps> You weren't gonna be able to make it this week. I'm excited. And then oh, I'm so happy to be We've got Mr. John Goo. Hello, John! Oh, I'm so excited you're here. This is up your alley, I bet. Oh, I miss 
it's all of you guys. <laughs> we have also, also mentioning that they're here, and feel free to mention anybody else. We got Kailani and Keiko. Hello, Kailani and Keiko. It's good to see you guys. I gotta say hi to George and Henry because I know they're gonna watch it at a later date. And maybe even Lila and Millie. And probably Lila and Millie. And I gotta say hi to Rohan because I know Rohan is in a morning outdoor camp and he's gonna do it at lunch. So hello Rohan. I'm glad that you're with us in the future. Future Rohan. We'll time travel. We, oh, oh wait, oh. Rohan is here. Rohan is here, hi Rohan. Oh, I just said hello to you because I thought you weren't coming. Nice. I thought you weren't gonna be here till later. Apparently time warp Rohan time warps himself back. Maybe there's two Rohans. He's One in time summer machine. camp. Time machine. Time machine. Rohan. Rohan, you've been busy the last three weeks. Can I have your time machine? <laughs> I want the time machine. We've also got Ooh. Orion. Hello, Orion. It's good to see you again. Oh, I love this crew. And it, it might not actually be Rohan. It said this is his dad. But oh, I too. see. I good. see. We thought Rohan built a time machine. Would've I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't. All right, so let's get to making our R2-D2 circuit. The first thing we're gonna do on all of our circuits is we are gonna cut and then crease our folds. So the cut lines are these dark black lines that come out. You'll notice here there's some black lines that go in and that's because we're gonna cut some like fringy pieces. So the first thing we'll do is we're gonna cut around these. You can cut your legs out too if you want to. And then we're gonna fold on these gray dotted lines, any gray dotted lines. We're gonna crease, and that just helps it so that when we end up folding our project together, it doesn't break as easily because the folds were already there when we put our paper circuit down. All right, so I'm just gonna cut this guy out all around. You can cut right on the line if you want to. You can cut right outside the line. The better you cut, the more time you put into the cutting, the better your project always ends up. It's like paper airplanes. The more time you spend in like getting those folds really right, the better your paper airplane flies. And you have to think about, as you're cutting, what color LED are you gonna put on your R2-D2? On my sample one, I put blue because it reminds me of R2-D2 showing Princess Leia the hologram in one of the movies. It was a long time ago, one of the originals. So I'm gonna cut the fringe so that these pieces are able to bend up and down. And we're not gonna bend them because there's no gray dotted lines there. I'll show you at the very end what we're going to do here with those pieces. But you do wanna cut down all of these black lines that are right here so that you have some little fringe pieces. And then you'll notice we have a gray dotted line right here. This is gonna be our switch flap when we're all ready. So we do wanna just pre-crease that. So just fold it up. And you can line it up so that it lines up really nicely with the side, just like that. And then you can just open it back up. And that gives us that crease that we really want to have. All right. And it also tells us on our little thing to make a hole at this black dot. You could use your hole puncher. I'm going to use just a pencil to poke that hole because I have the littler LEDs. And I'm just going to put my pencil in the hole. I hold it like a little bit up and I just poke through just like that. And now I have all the yicky paper on the outside, which is going to be my final. So if you wanted to decorate before you did a circuit, you could actually pause right now and decorate all of this. I'm going to decorate ours after, but I don't like that there's this little bump that's coming up because I use a pencil. So what you can do is you can flatten that out and you can poke it through the other way now that you know exactly where it needs to go. And you can push those guys through so that it'll be like a nice seam for when you have that little LED in there. All right, so I poked my hole, so I cut all around it. I added my little fringe cuts that were coming straight down. I folded that tab up and I put a little hole right there. And then our instructions tell us to lay down the copper tape along the two lines. So it tells us an orange line and a yellowish line. I'm gonna use my Curious George to hold up for you guys. So I'm gonna tape this guy right up here so that we can see it as we go. Now, if this is your first time doing paper circuits with us, you do wanna make sure everything is in one line. So that's pretty easy for the short leg, just doing one line. But for the long leg, you wanna make sure that you don't do a piece of tape here, 
rip it and then a piece of tape here, rip it and a piece of tape here. We need to fold those pieces and I'll show you guys how to do that in just a second. So let's get our copper tape. Where is the end of my copper tape? You can measure your copper tape like this. I'm gonna give myself a little extra for the people who might come later and it's their first time with paper circuits. One of the tricks with paper circuits is these copper tape can get really squiggly. You always want to, whoops, you always want to get your copper tape started so it looks kind of like a T or like a Y maybe. And this copper tape is sticky on the back side. You might be tempted to say, I'm just going to rip it all the way off and then put it down. But what happens is you get these curly cues and it's really hard to deal with. So what I suggest, instead of taking it all off in the beginning, you take your little piece of copper tape and you gotta get it started into that Y again, just like that. And once you can, you're gonna just put it down and stick it to the paper, just like this. And you're gonna follow along on where that line was on the template. And you have to go into this green circle and then you can rip it. You can use scissors or you can just rip it with your fingers in theory, there we go. You just rip it with your fingers. And then I use the back of my thumbnail and I just press that down like that. And that is one happy little line. Now I have to do this other line and it's a bit longer. So we're gonna give ourselves more tape. And when I put this down, I do need to make sure that the tape I put down now and the tape I put down before, they don't touch. There needs to be a gap between them. So that's one thing you want to make sure you look for, is that gap between these two pieces. They don't want to touch our two lines. So again, I'm going to get that Y, and I'm going to stick it down. I'm going to stick mine down just a little bit high to make sure I don't touch that other one, because I think I went a little high before. And then here, I don't want to rip it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it. I'm going to go up, and I can press down where it's sticky. I can just go back down like that, and now it's all ready. It's in my thing. Another way you can do corners if you don't, if you find that's tricky to bend backwards and forwards, is if you give yourself a little bit of extra tape, and then you just literally kind of bend it and stick it to where you want. This part looks icky, but that's okay because it's still all one piece of tape. And then you can just sort of press that piece down however you want, like that. All right, and I'm gonna smooth these pieces down also. Now, you mentioned before that the pre-folding was important. Yes. Is that, can you tell us why with this in front of you? Yes, yeah, so the pre-folding is really important. Not as much with this one specifically, but sometimes what will happen is when you fold these things, maybe your LED legs get folded and that pops them off of the tape, or maybe as you fold, you're like sort of moving the paper around and you move these LED legs off, or maybe you accidentally, you're folded a little too hard and you're creasing and you rip the copper tape. So there's a lot of things that could go wrong if you had your circuit working and you fold it. That's usually what happens is like we accidentally break our circuit, which we can fix, but it's easier if we just sort of get these folds in here so that the copper tape, when I put it down, is already going on that sort of creasy fold line. And it's like very easy now to do that. Great question. All right, so now we're gonna place a little piece of tape in the area indicated. So the way that we see the tape, it's a little harder to see now that we've got the thing on there, but there is a little bit of blue right here, and that light blue is always where our tape goes, and we're gonna cover this up. The reason is, is if I put my battery here, you'll notice not only does it touch this piece of the wire, it also touches this piece. And I don't want that. I want it to just touch the bottom on the short leg so that my circuit can go into the top leg, through into the short leg, into the bottom. Here I'm creating what's called a short circuit. So what I can do for that is I can take a piece of tape and I can tape over this wire that's coming down that I don't want the battery to touch. I need to be careful that I don't tape over this wire because I need that wire for the battery to touch there. So I'm gonna just lay down my piece of tape like that. And that prevents it, because it's a non-conductive tape, that prevents the electrons from being able to jump into the bottom of my battery. So now I just have the battery touching the bottom, touching this part. 
All right. So now we are going to tape our LED in. Now is the big moment. You've got to choose what color you want. I'm probably going to do blue again. I just feel like blue really matches R2-D2, mainly because R2-D2 is all blue and silver and white. So if you want it to poke through, what you can do is you can actually poke your legs through the bottom like that. And then you can hold this part of the LED and then bend them down. So what I would do is I'd hold the LED and I can bend these legs. So it's like an L or like my LED is like sitting just like that. And then you can put that through. And what that does is then on this side, it lets me sort of have the LED stick straight through, but the legs go on the paper. Now I bent mine the wrong way. And that's because right now I have my long leg on the bottom where the short leg needs to go and my short leg sort of towards the top. That's okay. What I'm going to do, take my LED out and I will flip the legs to the other side. All right. And I'm also going to like sort of spread my legs apart just a little bit here. Let's put those little eight legs through that hole. And now I've got my short leg is on the bottom so it can go to this line. My long leg is on the top so it can go to this line, which is exactly what I need. And LEDs are these one way streets. So if we put the long leg where the short leg goes and vice versa, we end up with a circuit that does not work because the electrons are trying to go down the street the wrong way. And they don't like that. All right, so I have it so that I've got these LED legs. Long leg is touching the top wire. Short leg will be touching the bottom wire. And I'm just gonna take a piece of non-conductive tape, so scotch tape, masking tape, and I can tape them in. When I tape them in, I do need to make sure that they are touching the copper tape. So this is a circuit that would not work because that long leg is touching paper and not copper tape. So you gotta make sure when you tape these guys in, they are making some good contact with that copper tape for both of them. And so now I can tape it in. I like to press really hard on it, just to make sure I'm getting good contact. It's sticking really well, just like that. All righty, so our LED is in, and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tape our battery in, and we always tape our battery in plus side up. So there's two sides. One says plus and it has a whole bunch of letters on it. The other side is looks like a, just a polka dot grid. The polka dot grid always goes towards your piece of paper. So when we put it in, we should always be able to read the writing. And we're going to put it in right on top of that green dot. We're going to put some tape around the edges, but not over the top. So if you've been with us, before for paper circuits, you'll know that if we go over the top, oops, we will prevent this piece of copper tape from touching the top. It'll touch the, the tape instead, right? And we need it to be touching metal to metal so the electrons can flow through there. So I'm going to, yeah, tape this guy in like that, leaving a big chunk of the top portion exposed. And you can also add another piece in if you feel like you want a little bit more stability in your battery, you're worried if you're worried it's gonna fall out. Sometimes I like, so I have just the top, just the top little piece. I could do just the bottom little piece down here. And I still have a whole bunch of the metal of that battery exposed and that's the really important part. And then when I press here, you can kind of see it through. My little LED will light up. So I'm gonna take this guy off of Curious George. So to test your circuit, you just close this flap and your LED should go right on, which is awesome. This is a great first circuit. If it's not going on when I close the flap like this, there's a couple things you could try. One thing is to double check that your legs are on top of that copper tape. One leg per line of copper tape. So you don't want both legs up here or both legs down here. You could make sure that in this little spot right here, the two lines of copper tape are not touching each other because that can hurt your circuit. You can check that you don't have any rips in your copper tape on these fold lines. You can make sure your battery's in the right way. You could double check that your LED legs are the right way. And the trick for that is actually just flip one. So don't flip the battery and the LED legs. You could just flip the battery and see if it works. Um, and the other thing is sometimes it won't go on 
but if you press on the legs, it will. And then what you just need, you need to just make a little bit of a better connection between the legs and the copper tape, if that's the case. I suspect everybody has probably gotten this guy going. So then, what you can do, you have two options. You could fold it up, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now. Or you could take a minute and decorate this side. So I've got my little R2-D2 here that I decorated. It's a little easier to decorate when it's flat like this than when it's all folded up. So something to think about. Maybe you wanna spend a moment, pause the video, and decorate your R2-D2, and then come back and see how to fold it up. And as you're decorating, just know that these little fringy pieces are gonna be the top dome. So these fringes that are here, they actually make this little dome piece of our R2-D2. So they won't, you can decorate them for sure, but they won't, you won't see them quite the same way. All right, so I'm gonna check in with Evan, make sure we have no questions. How are we on questions? Mm, ask them now if you want them answered. Yes, ask uh, your questions now if you have questions. And if not, I'll show you guys how to fold it up. I'm so excited. It's such a bright blue. It's very brilliant. Brilliant right. blue. No, All right. No questions are coming. So I'm going to fold this up for you guys. So what we're going to do is notice where the fringe is sort of comes down to here. I'm going to put a piece of tape on the other side at the edge like that. So it's half on and half off. And then I'm going to roll this guy up and I'm going to tape these two pieces together. Just like that. Now, it doesn't look very much like an R2-D2 right now. It's kind of like a teardrop, but what you can do is if you just sort of press these guys a little bit, you can sort of roll it a little bit into the thing. And as you're folding, you want to check every time, ooh, does my LED still work? What I just did, did it break my LED or is it still working? Because that gives you an idea of what might have happened so that you don't get to the very end and it's not working and you don't have any idea when that happened. All right, so there are six pieces of fringe. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a piece of tape on one piece of fringe and you'll stick it up so it sticks up like that. And you're gonna take it to the next piece of fringe right across from it. So there's, they all have partners opposite them. And you can just tape the fringe down like this. So I just got my piece of tape and then I'm just gonna tape it whoop, directly across onto the next piece of fringe that's straight opposite of it. If you want a really tall R2-D2, you could tape your fringe a little more loosely. And then you just press that like that, and then I'll take the next pair. So these two guys are a pair, and these two guys are a pair. So now I'm gonna take these two, I'm gonna fold them down a little bit, and I'll put a piece of tape on those as well. So again, I just put my tape straight up so it's kind of half on, half off. And then I can fold that fringe down, tape it down like that. And then I gotta do it one more time. So again, take my little piece of tape, I'll put it half on here so the sticky part is still, I still have some stickiness. I'm gonna fold these guys over and I'm just gonna press it down. And if you want, you could stick a pencil through here or maybe your finger's long enough to really get those pressed down good. And this will also sort of help your R2-D2 take a little bit of a more um, cylindrical shape. And now we just need our legs for our R2-D2. So we can cut our legs out. Now R2-D2 actually has three legs, but I kind of use this flap that's in here, that's our switch, as a third leg. So you could either bring it down when you don't want R2-D2 on, you could have it sort of be like this. And when you do want R2-D2 on, you might put a paper clip there or a little binder clip, and that sort of acts as that third leg for R2-D2. So you don't actually need three paper legs, but maybe you decide you want three paper legs. That's totally fine. This is your project. It can only be perfect by doing what you want it to be, right? There is no right or wrong projects. You could use all different colors if you wanted to does not matter. And then our little legs, they just sort of tape on to our little R2-D2 to help it stand up. So to do that, we just, I just like sort of like let it come out like down below the body of my R2-D2 a little bit and just tape it on. 
And if you want, you can like sort of press fold these, not fold fold, but just sort of like, I don't know what's a good word for that, like bend. Bend, <laughs> bend is a good <laughs> word for that. You can just bend them if you want them to look a little more round. And we can put our other leg on. Goes this way, like that, and I can also sort of like roll bend this guy, so the legs kind of match the body. And I have this little R two D two. He stands up without the third leg, which is awesome. And again, if you want, I have a little clip right here that's clipping that LED on, right? And it's nice because it's a fun little switch, so you can have your R two D two on when you want to play with it. You can take it off when you don't want it on so that it saves its battery life. Can you show that again real slow? Yep, so the switch, here's my flap that's right here. So the switch, you can either press it and it goes on, or I have these little clips. You might have binder clips, paper clips, and you can just put it all the way on and it acts like you're finger pinching it. And then you have your little R2-D2, which is pretty fun. And of course this one is very sad because it needs some decorations. So hopefully we'll get to see all of your guys' decorations over in Zoom. But that is how we make our R2-D2 paper circuit. Tomorrow we will be making our Millennium Falcon. I did have one parent tell me that the PDF came jumbled to them, so I will make sure that you guys get a PDF that looks like this. Super excited to make the Millennium Falcon. Our boosters will light up for the Millennium Falcon so we can go at warp speed, which will be really, really fun. All right, I am going to say goodbye to my YouTube crowd. I hope that we see you guys again tomorrow and the rest of the weeks throughout the summer. If you want to support us, don't forget we're on patreon.com slash rosieresearch, and that gets you all the PDF downloads and also into our Zoom room where you can ask questions or you can just share all of the projects that we have together. We will see you tomorrow. Have a great day.